This is Steel, North Dakota, and tomorrow is the 81st anniversary of temperatures here reaching 121 degrees. It was July the 6th in 1936. No temperature higher has ever been recorded in the United States other than in Arizona, Nevada, New Mexico, and California. And the low here, recorded low, is 50 degrees below zero. And you know there was a wind that day, so it, with the wind chill factor, it had to be even colder. Harsh conditions out here for people who moved here when there was no, no air conditioning and just a stove to heat their sod hut. In any case, this is where Gunnar Larson was at the helm of the North Coast Limited in December 1961 when it hit a pickup truck crossing this intersection. The pickup truck was coming this direction, going south, and we're looking right now to the east, the direction the North Coast Limited was traveling. The depot here at Steel was over here, right in front of us. Right. Okay. And that has since moved, they've, they've since moved that depot down to Mandan. The telegrapher's office was right inside that white bay window, looking both ways on the tracks, east and west. And the North Coast Limited came by from the west, heading east, and hit the pickup truck, which would have been right over here. The axle and the transmission from the pickup would have flown right into this brick wall, originally brick, now we can't find any damage because it's just plastic. Back in 1961, they didn't have crossing arms where the road crosses the tracks there. No, no. no. But they had lights and bells, would that be correct? The wig, wig wag bells and the yell, lights, yell. I can't give, give exactly time, but it was about 10 something in the evening. Uh, we were uh, out of Mandan on North Coast Limited, train number 26. And we were running about 10 minutes late, see? And when we got to, when we got down, the, well, I, I'll have to tell you, down to, uh, all the way from Mandan, we get down to Steel. And so I, uh, I whistled for the crossings of the steel, and we had the Mars lights was flashing and the bright headlights, and uh, the order board was clear, steel, and black signals were clear. And so um, when we got down to the crossing, why all of a sudden there was a pickup that ran right square in front. He didn't must have never stopped, look and listen. He ran right in front of the engine there. We, we both met together about the same moment. And uh, then there was um, a father, and uh, he had uh, that uh, two girls, older girls, and a younger girl, and himself in the front of the of the, of the cab on a little pickup. And in the back, he had uh, he had um, two boys and another girl in the back. And they had just come from a uh, they practice for a church meeting, a Christmas meeting. See, and he ran in front there and. There was no way that we could avoid hitting him, and he should never pull out there. He didn't stop, look, and listen, and drove straight in front, and four of them got killed. Four got killed uh, out of that accident down there, which he done himself. It wasn't by, 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 by there. He, should, he never stopped to look and listen, and that's what he should have done. Then he would have saved, he'd have saved the accident. So that's why I always say that people, people today, they should stop, look, and listen, or do the best they can before they cross, and look at the, at the crossing signals before they, they go across there. Because the trains can't stop like you can on a car. Your trains do have no way of throwing outside. You're on steel rails traveling. And, and that, that way, you know, we can't do, the engineer can't do much about it, only do the best he can. And that's about the, the, the only thing I can tell the people on, on the safety first on railroads. And that's good for the, for the public, and it's also for the companies that you work for. Now, that's, that's about I could warn people on that part of it. Was that a difficult thing for you to live with? Huh? Even though it wasn't your fault, was it difficult for you to live well, with? Well, it, uh, it, it, not your fault, but then at the same time, you know, in an incident like that, you know, why you can always uh, get some bad memories about it. You know, you know what I'm speaking about, and you know how people feel about it. That's it.
The three Sherman children who passed away at the scene were buried on Christmas Eve, December 24, 1961. Making that day all the much sadder was the fact that their six-year-old sister, Cindy, who was also in the accident, passed away in the hospital just hours before the funeral. The driver of the truck and father of the children, Harry Sherman, passed away in the year 2003, uh, having obviously undergone over 40 years of an intense, uh, unimaginable grief. He was the mayor of Steele at that time. He ran an appliance store there and was a veteran of World War II. The Northern Pacific engineer, uh, Gunnard Larson, who joined the railroad in 1928, passed away in the year 2002, just a few years after our interview. Uh, the summer 2002 issue of the Main Streeter, which is the Journal of the Northern Pacific Railway Historical Association, ran an article on Gunnard Larson, and uh, I'm going to uh, read a little bit of, from that article as to his memories of the accident. The train rocketed through the small town of Steele, just 40 miles from Bismarck, at about 77 miles per hour. The order board and block signal were clear, the Mars light oscillating, headlights on bright, horns sounding for crossings. Suddenly, a pickup truck crossed the tracks near the depot. Gutter and fireman Ray Weber glimpsed the truck and the locomotive headlights for just an instant, then felt a powerful impact. The truck was crushed, hurled skyward, then crashed in a heap along the right-of-way. A piece of the truck's rear axle and transmission shot through the depot like a cannonball, seriously injuring the telegrapher inside. At that speed, nearly a mile passed before the train stopped. Rescue personnel were already at work by the time the train backed up to the depot. Gunner dropped down to the platform, fearful of what he might find. Entering the heavy, heavily damaged depot, he encountered a nightmarish scene, the bodies of three children. They were laid out on the floor, covered with sheets. Another child lay dying on the waiting room bench. The telegrapher, sprawled in the corner, was bleeding profusely with a broken leg. He returned to the cab with that horrific sight at steel forever etched in his mind. 